Hi, my name is Charlie Rose and welcome again to Rosendi Woodworks where today I want to focus on something a little bit different and this is an eco-friendly tool cart and I've had this tool cart for several years now. It's evolved and to finally get to the state of where it is today and what I really want to encourage you to do is look around your shop, find the things that maybe you're not using and figure out how you can utilize those and put them to good use so that way you can kind of get a feel and a sense of accomplishment, plus creatively speaking, you can come and find ways to make things that are really not being used at all into something that's of practical use for those in the shop around you. So with that, for us, we do a lot of things in kitchens. So I have a lot of kitchen things such as countertops sometimes that come from projects or home show displays that we may have. We use a lot of Baltic birch, so I have 18 millimeter and 12 millimeter and 6 millimeter little pieces and components, sometimes larger sheet goods, but a lot of those can be left over from projects too. So what I've done here, you can see that's Baltic birch, I've got painted Baltic birch in the front. Um, just a quick overview, we'll look at all of these different components as we go through the video, but I've got drawers on each end with items that we use on a daily basis. If you look here too, I've got items on this back side. I guess you can probably see what those are. Those are door hinges. Nothing wrong with utilizing that. Now, is it beautiful on the back? No, probably not. However, it's functional. So I got drawers on this end as well. Hey, I have a hidden surprise here. Check this out. Can you see me? But Fun stuff. So what I want to encourage you to do is find things around the shop that you can do that makes it creative, that makes it fun, that utilizes things that maybe you're not utilizing in that space. Who knows what you might find up. And if you have some great ideas of using creative things in your shop, please share them in the links below, comment. I'll be glad to go watch. Um, I think I get a lot of creative ideas from YouTube. I hope you do as well. But that's just another great way for us to share and learn and figure out how to become even more creative ourselves. So thank you very much for watching the channel. Stay tuned. See all the different components on each of the sizes as we go into more detail. Now this tool cart has a hidden compartment. And the reason why I say it's hidden because I've had some guys in the shop that didn't even know it was there until I asked them to get something out of it. So it's uh, one of those ways just to make the most use out of all the space possible. And here we had some headspace above the drawers, above the tip out, above the framing of the actual box itself. And if you can kind of see here, this is made out of uh, Baltic birch, so it's, it's very sturdy, glued and nailed together. But we had this open space here, so I just put a panel, again, an extra panel that we had laying around on the bottom, so it's a melamine surface, and then just really it's a collection of different things. I don't put a ton of stuff in here that I get all the time just because I usually have something on the bench surface, but these I use all the time, especially if I'm carrying things around or moving pallets and stuff in the shop but these are just simple work gloves and stuff, but everything from left, some extra lead, I've got planer blades to some numbers. Got to figure out how I'm going to use these numbers for something. I might need to put something up here. I just have numbers, no letters, so maybe I can put something on the back. Missed a golden opportunity. I could put my Rosendi Woodworks there. Rosendi Woodworks. I'm going to have to practice that. Rosendi Woodworks. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Wabbit twigs. Wabbit. <laughs> wabbit. 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 That will go there. So I think that'll be a great place to have a little logo. But a neat little place. Again, utilizing all the space. Use some more chain. This is chain that we had left over from remodeling our office where we were sus suspending some things from the acoustical ceiling. But just a simple screw on each end. You've got to stop. It allows you to open it. Um, again, I love this countertop. Simple back, but that's an easy way to utilize more of your space, again, in an eco-friendly build. So I want to take a moment just to look at the build. I'm not going to go into the build details of this. Well, for one reason, I don't have video footage of it, but I'll do that for future builds. But a lot of the shop tools that I build are stands and carts are very similar in that I start off with this structure in the corners. These are my legs here. As you can see, it goes all the way down to the floor until we added wheels to it. But essentially, I've got a Baltic perch strip that's typically three to four inches based on what I'm trying to accomplish and what I have. If I want a uniform look on the outside, then obviously this one side is going to be shorter than the other. But you can see they're overlapped, they're joined in the corners, just a real simple butt joint. They're glued and nailed. And then I have, then I build the inside runners 
to go across to connect the four legs together. And then on the outside, I put a flush panel strip and railing so that way that it ties it all together. Again, once it's glued and nailed, it's a very solid structure and it's simple. I use it for just a lot of leftover scrap pieces when I do this. Um, or even sometimes I'll build it from scratch. And you can see here, just a real quick pan around the shop. That's how this structure is built for the router stand, table saw stand, workbench, and even all the way over here, you can see this particular planer and joiner stand, and even in all the racks over there, that's the same structure that I've used. And the reason why I go back to it, it's sturdy, it works well, and it holds up. So hopefully that's a simple system. Maybe it gives you an idea too of how you can potentially use that in your shop space. So now we're going to take a moment and look at the drawers that we have on this side. But they're all on push to open rails, which I really, really like because it makes it convenient. I find that I'm coming by here and I'm just slapping the door. It pops open and I grab what I need and I'm good to go. So let's just dive right in. This is the drawer that I use the most frequently. I've got a steel rule on top, simple peg pin here that I can just slap it on. All of the screws that I like to use, spacers, things that I grab pretty regularly like my countersinks. Um, I've got some other bits. Uh, lighter lead pieces just a variety but things that I use frequently and that's the thing I would encourage you to do and you can see here this drawer pulls all the way out but these drawers were only this size so it goes back and beyond but that space that's here you'll see on the other side is utilized with a different drawer so it's really neat how we were able to make the most use of this cube space then this one got my hammers mallets drill sets that I use, bit sets that I use frequently, little level here that's for small things link uh, that I'd use around the shop. This particular one, um, my mechanical set, so I've got some ratchets here, ratchet set, along with some pliers that, um, again, as things go wrong or break in the shop, and you gotta take something apart, it doesn't always have to be woodworking things that I use in this space. Here I've got uh, just a, a mix of things. I've got some flat files, some smaller files, uh, crowbar, nail puller, and things like that. Got some Allen wrench, a lot of different sizes. The kits have broken, so they just get thrown in here. So probably not the most efficient way to use that space, but that's what we have there. At the bottom, and I use this all the time. So in an ideal situation, this should be up higher, but because of the size of it, you know, it's a little bit bulkier but it's got my personal protective equipment in here. So I've got my respirator, my earphones, or my ear uh, muffs there too, sound, sound protection. And so that's all on the bottom. I've got things here to wipe for my glasses that I use all the time as well. So again, part of it is, the majority of it is based upon the frequency of use, but some things are based upon size or down at the bottom. And then here, you see me reaching down, but honestly what I really do a lot of times is just push it with my foot and grab it out. But this is a super deep drawer, things that I don't use as much, but I know where they are. Ratchet sets, um, sockets, as well as this pull saw. Again, these are cheap items because I don't use these type of tools all the time as far as the ratchets and stuff, but it does come in helpful and handy at times. And I have another shop at home that I use that I have other materials as well. So trying to tool out two shops, I don't always spend, but I do get things that are functional and work for me. So. That's this particular side, so let me show you the rest. Again, just using some spare panels that we had that came off of a project, essentially just cutting them to length to fit in this space after the legs were built. But what that does is, in here I've used some tip-out tray hinges that are oftentimes used under countertop sinks. I have so many of these left over from different projects. So those are easy to use in places like this, just like what you have in front of a sink where there's not a lot of um, depth to be able to utilize. I've put things that are shallow and in here the things that I use all the time. I've got my metric tape measure that I use from FastCap. I really like the FastCap brand of uh, measuring instruments. Things like pencils, mechanical pencils that are easy to use, easy to access. I'm always needing those so I know exactly where, right where it is. I use the center punch all the time so that's a simple easy access item. Other things like needle nose pliers, uh, little cutoff pliers, the lead for my pencils, knives, sharpies, utility knives, and things like that that are used. Got a roll of some quick tape for quick access, a place for just a speed square as well. 
that I can have. I really like, it's just simple. Um, I put this little cutout on the front just to make it an easy grab hole to be able to tip out. This was pre-finished wood, as I mentioned before, just again, nothing that we were gonna use because it was left over from a project, real simple. Then down below, now this one's got a lock mechanism. And I did buy these for different projects and had a whole bunch left over because they didn't work quite like we wanted to. But once it's compressed in, it's a smooth surface. It also stays locked up. I'll show you what that does and pull it out. Um, here's the lock mechanism. If I squeeze here, you see this little metal tab comes up and that locks in behind. There we go. There we go. And that locks in behind this one that keeps it from falling out as I move it around. Now I don't have anything here currently. I did have some wrenches in. But you can see it's held up. It's got a piano hinge at the bottom. It's got this long chain here that keeps it at that distance so it doesn't flop out all the way. So real simple. You can't put a lot of depth on there. Um, so probably items that are two or three inches deep, maybe a little bit deeper. But it just makes it quick access for things that you might use and be able to tuck it away real simply. So we still have more sides to review. This is the back of the tool cart and really it was open it just had the legs that went to the floor with it being open the thing that i didn't like about it is just anytime around the shop but dust would get in here and get in the drawer so it rendered it ineffective the the containment of the drawers as far as keeping it a dust-free workspace for storage of items so we put a panel on the back as i started looking at it i thought well i have some space there so what can we do to maximize that space now again this is the same push button that was on the front but you can see here it's locked kind of flush so things don't get caught on it push it it releases the lock mechanism and it also pops out the handle that you can grab and I'll see if I can find the link for where I purchased those and share those in the video at the bottom but here I've got some simple end wrenches that I use just some things that I bought from Harbor Freight you gotta love Harbor Freight especially when it comes to stocking my items that I just don't use a lot now if I'm a mechanic and I do this all the time then probably those aren't the tools that I get for for how I use it these work perfectly they're fairly inexpensive, but again, just a simple thing on the back of this tool cart, where if you don't need a whole lot of depth, you can see all the rails in here, but if you don't need a whole lot of depth, find ways to utilize that. Again, using some uh, chain that I have here left over from the project, I still have a big spool of that. I've got a piano hinge at the bottom that's left over from another project. Like I said before, these might be the only things that I've purchased, but again, we didn't use them in the project, so they're here. Guess what these are? Of course you can probably tell, those are just door hinges. So oftentimes we'll replace door hinges in a home and put ADA hinges that open up a little bit larger and we have door hinges left over. And I don't always keep them, but on occasion if I feel like there's a project that I might use them for, then I'll have this. Now, you look at this, this is not beautiful. It's not meant to be beautiful on the back. Now, if I could clean this up and add something, I probably will at some point. But for functionality, this is perfect. And that's the thing I want to encourage is find the things that you utilize in your shop and what you have left over or extra, figure out ways to use those because let's not throw those away, especially if we can find a creative way to use them. Again, push to open rails on here. Um, but what I have in here is just real simple things. This is where I've got my nails for my nailing guns, my finish nailers. So just 16 and 18 gauge nails spread throughout. Um, at some point I want to work on a better way to store these because what I find is that it's easy for those to topple over as I'm grabbing and things fall out. So just a better way to organize that. But just some lubrication spray. I've got my oil for the guns that I always give a squirt in there before we're getting those fired up. But, and it's probably not fully utilized in terms of occupying all this space. Um, I'll probably put like another little I don't want to say a hidden drawer, but another drawer inside of it that can slide backwards to expose all of this. But just, again, a simple way to be able to keep some items there. Again, I'm utilizing whatever depth I didn't use here from that other drawer on the other side I'm using here to be able to take advantage of that space too. Then, as you might guess or ask, well, if you got nailing guns, where are your, if you got nails, where are your nailing guns? Here are the nailing guns. So I've got my... 18 gauge and 16 gauge nailing guns here that I utilize all the time. So this is real simple. We use it quite a bit. It's got like a little tray divider in there. Again, these are leftover drawers from other projects and really utilizing a lot of the same stuff that we do in homes when we do kitchens. But for this, these are just leftover items that we use here. Now I've got a little hook that I use a lot of times if I've got my nailing gun and, and I need to be able to have the sprayer or something, I can just clip it and hang it here. 
probably going to take this off. This has probably caught more pair of pants than shirts than anything else that I've got. So maybe not the best idea, but certainly something just we can come up with a creative way to be able to hold the items to make them easy to access. Thank you again for watching this video. If you've made it this far, we really appreciate it. I know it's difficult to keep that attention for that long, but maybe we kept some things here interesting for you, gave you some ideas on our eco-friendly cart build. For me, it's one of those projects where I really, really enjoy taking products and leftover items that we're just not using that are maybe collecting dust. And if we can get those to where we can use them and make them purposeful, make them function for us in a way that helps us in our shop, let's do it. There's a lot of things that you might have sitting out there that are getting dusty. What can you look through and figure out how you can find creative ways to use them without breaking the bank, without going and buying other things at the hardware store or the lumber yard to make those things work for you. If you got to get a few things, no big deal, but let's see what we can do to come up with creative ideas to make things in our shop easier, more eco-friendly, and fun to do. Thank you again. Hope to see you back next time. Thank you very much.